Hi there, Ian Dixon here. How are you today? So, um, business owners, why do so many businesses and business owners fail? That, that, that's the three, four minute question that I'm going to offer at least one solution to today. Uh, if you are a business owner that is struggling to make it work, if you're a business owner that's not enjoying what they're doing and there's an element of resentment and it's hard and you're not, it's not all that it, you thought it was going to be and it's not all it was cracked up to be, then stick around. Um, I can't guarantee 100% the solution, but I'm going to give you some idea of why or what it is that you could do. To help with that so uh, so that's where we're going today is why do businesses fail uh, what is it about it's literally this isn't why all businesses fail there's a multitude of reasons why but this one thing is something as a business coach I've worked on with with clients over the years it definitely makes a difference and uh, I've got quite a, a good analogy that will help you understand it so so if that's of interest you stick around um, if you are new to the channel please do support us with a little click on the red button subscribe ding the bell we'd love to hear your comments uh, but without further ado let's get into it so um, one of the things as a business owner myself is my third business um, and all other than the first one, bizarrely, which wasn't any problem at all, it just flew and I thoroughly loved it and it was 1987. Um, it, it took off straight away and I think I just got lucky in when I hit the ground and the ignorance of what I was doing, I just got on and it made it work. So, But the other two, I definitely went through a phase where, even doing this job, where I ran out of money and uh, I wasn't enjoying the activity to get business and couldn't get the business which is the bit that I love to do so and pretty much without exception I'm guessing every business owner that's watching this has a business that they set up because they love their widget or their product or their service I'm thinking butcher, baker, candlestick maker. Uh, I can distinctly remember sitting with a baker that was, uh, he had a wobbly chin. You know, he was angry, he was resentful and disappointed that he'd ended up being in the worst job ever and having the worst boss ever, uh, lowest pay, minimum time off, and it was his business. And he never got to bake. So it, it like it was a killer. So now to stay on topic, the the challenge here is to in order to get to the widget, in order to get at the end product. So for example, if you are a baker, um, you have to love the process that you need to undertake to be able to bake. Um, I don't know if baker's the best analogy but, or, or the best uh, uh, profession to share. Um, it doesn't really matter what the profession is, but as a, as a business there are very disparate or separate activities required in order to deliver the widget and we all set up our businesses to, to be able to deliver the widget. I love sitting down with people and helping them to be more successful. But in order to be able to do that, I need to market my business in order to help more businesses to become successful. And uh, there were elements of, of the marketing activity that I just didn't enjoy. A good example of that is, you know, when I started in 2004, one of the things that I was taught, the shortest route to market is the telephone on your desk, pick up the telephone, uh, you know, have a list of people, pick up the telephone and ring them and ask them if you can go and see them and then explain how it works. So in, in essence, it was just basically telemarketing. So now I absolutely found it abhorrent. I, I, it, it was something I did not want to do is to sit there with a cold list and ring business owners and say, can I come and speak to you and, and share with you what it is that I do? And it's the shortest route to market. People do buy uh, that way because if you kiss enough frogs, eventually you're gonna find a prince and you're gonna get a match and you're gonna be able to sit down with somebody that's interested in buying. So I said I'd share an analogy with you that it sort of hits home with me 
is that I know that I, I need to be, um, I need to keep myself in shape and I'm not somebody that you would catch in a gym pushing or pulling weights, um, but I know I need to keep fit. But if you ask me if I wanted to go and play tennis, I'll come and play tennis with you all day long. And the byproduct of us playing tennis is that I get to keep fit. So, so in my world and in, in, in my business world, to be able to grow this business, the process that I, so I'll, I'll share with you. So my business was pretty much finished. It was bust. Uh, 2006, I was looking for work and um, I'd essentially run out of money and I didn't have enough clients to, to sustain and keep me through um, the, the process of generating more money. And um, uh, I can remember having a conversation with my coach at the time and uh, he was incredibly angry that I was thinking about leaving the, the industry. In fact, what he said to me was, don't you dare leave this industry. And he said to me, um, rather than fight against um, uh, doing marketing activities uh, that you don't want to do, if you're going to go, at the very least, leave the industry doing something that you love doing. So what marketing activity do you most enjoy? So I said to him, well, I guess the thing for me is to do, uh, I was doing um, free seminars. I would do a, th a three hour seminar and just give some content away. And the idea is that if you share enough good content, people will recognize, there's another video, people will recognize you as an expert and they'll come and talk to you and they'll want some one-to-one -one support. So uh, so I thought, well, I'll do, a, I'll do a seminar. As my swan song, as my bow out, I'm gonna do a, another seminar. And I thoroughly enjoyed the marketing of that seminar. I thoroughly enjoyed the delivery of that seminar. And I certainly thoroughly enjoyed the three clients I got as a result of doing that seminar. So now um, I've shared this story, as you can imagine, this is 2006. Over the years, I've shared this story over and over again with clients about the importance of enjoying the process of going to market to deliver your widget or your product or your service more than being able to deliver that product or service if you can. Uh, because you're far more likely to get there if you're doing something on a daily basis that is palatable and enjoyable. So, so just stop and think for a second, are there, because we nowadays in 2020 when this video was recorded, there are so many ways to go to market. You don't need to pick up the telephone if that's not what you want to do. You don't need to push the weights if you want to keep fit. You can go and play tennis. If tennis isn't your thing, go and play golf. If golf isn't your thing, do some Pilates. So there are a gazillion ways in which you can market or go to market now that we have all of these online options as well as our offline options. I also call marketing activities constraints, which basically means this is something that I don't want to do or I'm not good at and I can outsource it. So you could actually, I was with somebody this morning that just basically outsources all of that activity so that they can concentrate on the enjoyment of delivering their widget. So, so that was it. It is essentially those businesses that struggle to get there, a big piece of that puzzle is the piece that sits before you and the delivery of the widget. And a lot of that comes down to how enjoyable and how palatable is the process of getting the client, the customer, and the delivery of the widget. Do something that is in enjoyable to you rather than fighting against something that's not, and you're far more likely to get there. Hope you found it useful, less than 10 minutes. Make sure the journey is as enjoyable, if not more enjoyable, than the delivery of your widget and you will be successful in business, I promise you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please do support us here on Business Talk by uh, clicking on our subscribe button and ding the bell. We have over 300 videos coming through 2020, uh, so there's plenty more to come. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to catching up with you on the next video. Bye for now.